The seasons are changing here at the moment, so we've just finished summer and now it's autumn. We can definitely feel the cool, crisp air in the mornings and afternoons now. My mum used to always make me roast chicken and vegetable dinners whenever I came back to visit her. Comfort food for a chilly afternoon. We have a few different options for cooking here, living off the grid. We have this gas barbecue, which we can basically use as an oven, stove top and grill, which is great. We invested in a camp oven or a Dutch oven many years ago, as we used to go camping off the grid all the time during the school holidays. The camp oven is a cast iron casserole dish that can be used for all your one pot meals that are cooked over a fire. A bit like a slow cooker. We have often made stews, soups and damper on the camp oven over the open fire. The only thing with using the camp oven is that it takes a bit of time and preparation to get the coals just right, but it's definitely worth it. You need to start your fire at least an hour or two before you want to start cooking. I grabbed some rosemary from our garden for some lovely seasoning for this dish. I actually handmade the design on this platter myself by attending a resin workshop at KH Designs in Brendale in Brisbane. KH Designs is one of our stockers for our Willows Wonders soap. Kerry owns a shop and teaches the resin classes. The class was a lot of fun and Kerry helped me a lot with my piece and I loved how it turned out being my only first time. So if you're ever in Brisbane, go check out her shop. I just grabbed a few root vegetables for this dish and peeled them and roughly chopped them. The camp oven works almost like the oven at home, creating heat all around the food. You need to put the coals on top of the oven as well. We started our fire about 24 hours earlier, so it had plenty of hot coals and we just stocked it up with a few more logs a couple of hours before cooking to make sure that we had enough coals. You don't want to put your camp oven in a fire that's too hot and raging with large flames, but you also need to have enough hot coals for on top of the camp oven as well. This will provide a nice, even, constant source of heat. You can put a grill rack over the fire and cook on this, but when we're cooking our roast, we just put it straight on the ground, then we surround it with coals using a shovel. Sometimes we just pierce some potatoes and wrap them in some foil and throw them in the coals as well and they take about an hour to cook. We moved the camp oven a bit further away as it was too hot and we could hear it sizzling inside. This is a super simple dish as you just put it all in one pot and you only need to check every now and then how it's going and move the veggies around every now and then. You can just sit back and relax with a glass of wine and wait until it's ready. You need to season your camp oven, so just check the manufacturer's instructions. This is done to remove any coating that was applied during manufacture. Your camp oven will also need a bit of love and care after each use, but it's worth it. We thought a bottle of hippie wine would suit the occasion while we waited for our roast chicken to cook. Our 140 acre off-grid property is basically at the southern end of the Granite Belt, the coldest part of Queensland and the northern end of the New England region in New South Wales, Australia. While dinner is cooking, I'll show you how we do our dishes. We collect some rainwater from our tank and boil it up on our gas cooker or our barbecue. It's been raining for a few days now, so our tank is full. The rainwater tank is around the back of the shed. This is our kitchen floor right now. It's all dirt at the moment. We've just had a quote for concrete and it's going to cost us an arm and a leg. 
hopefully it'll be done next week so that we'll be able to get some proper heating and storage in here also we won't have to live with deadly spiders anymore anyway back to the dishes so we just use a bucket in our boiled rainwater outside next to the fire to clean our dishes you shouldn't use detergent in your camp oven to wash it up unless it's very well seasoned after it's dried you need to re-season it by coating the inside including the lid with cooking oil to prevent it from rusting it's one of the most useful pieces of camping equipment that you can have I've been throwing out our dirty dishwater out here, but look at all these plague green soldier beetles that have now infested the area. These beetles eat other insects and plants. Apparently these larger swarms mean that they're mating. Paul has just headed off over there to check on our native bees and he's picking some of the native olives. The native Australian olives were eaten by our indigenous people. The fully ripened berries are edible. The darker the berry, the sweeter it gets. You can pick the green berries and brine them to remove the bitterness like you do with the traditional olives. When they're ripe, they look a little bit like mini blueberries, but most of them are seed. There's not a lot of flesh there. The roast chicken comes out so tender and juicy and it gives great flavor to all the other vegetables as well. I usually just wait until the meat is falling off the bone and then serve. We often steam some greens to go with it and use the leftover chicken the next day to make soup. Now look at this amazing sunset that we can enjoy while we eat our dinner. So much better than watching television and so good for the soul. In this area, nighttime frost is very common. Bleak, overcast conditions on rare occasions bring hail, sleet, and sometimes snow. The frosts in this area usually start next month, so we've only got a couple of months left to prepare for winter. Autumn in Tenterfield brings average daily highs of 18 to 24 degrees Celsius and average lows are between four to 18 degrees Celsius. Perfect temperature for sitting beside a log fire and watching the sunset over the ranges. For those of you that don't like moths or flying insects, avert your eyes now. One of the world's largest insects weighing up to 30 grams, the female giant wood moth is one of the heaviest moths on earth. As larvae, they live for three years. They spend most of their life as a larvae inside the eucalyptus trees, feeding up the tissue. They rely on their fat stores to sustain them through their adult life. Female wood moths can grow up to 15 centimeters, almost six inches long, with wind spans stretching 25 centimeters, nearly 10 inches across. They only survive a few days after reaching maturity. Their dense bodies make it difficult for them to fly and they often climb trees and wait for males to mate. They typically rest on the grey tree trunks or gum trees where they fold their narrow wings alongside their body, camouflaging them from predators. 
After laying 20,000 eggs, the female moth will die. Because of their short lifespan, few people have actually seen these unusual giants alive. In the mornings, the fog is now starting to come in from all sides and the birds sound happy. Can you see the kangaroos jumping around in the grass? The peacefulness of this place is so healing. We're looking forward to building our own food forest based on the practices of regenerative agriculture and permaculture, which owe their roots and theories to our indigenous people. By living this way, we hope to take steps beyond sustainability and towards a way of living that not only reduces our environmental impact, but also repairs and restores what has already been lost. Time for a cup of tea and breakfast. We can also use our saucepans and woks over our small gas cooker. We've set this up just inside the shed door out of the rain. It's a good option for when we're boiling our rainwater from the tank or making a quick breakfast. This is also a good option if we have fire bands in place. We also tend to use the gas cooker a lot more during summer when we don't need to have the fire going all day. Some French toast for breakfast this morning. We had a little bit of rain and some parts of our creek started to fill up again. After we had this rain, we planted our bush tucker seedlings that we got from the local indigenous nursery. During this time in other parts of northern New South Wales and southern Queensland, there was some major flooding and some people lost their lives. Our hearts go out to those families that lost their loved ones during this time. Our little waterfall. So we made some creamy chicken soup on our gas cooker from the leftover chicken from our roast chicken the night before. Another one of mum's comfort food recipes. We believe that eating fresh locally sourced produce simply makes life better. So we always try to get it through independent farmers. That is until we can start doing our own fruit and veggies. Something that we're really looking forward to is building a sustainable future. <laughs>